Do you ever feel like your emotions are giving you whiplash? Like they're changing so fast and so hard that you kind of feel like you're losing your mind? Yeah, that's emotional dysregulation and it's actually super common with neurodivergent folks. Hi, my name is Megan and welcome to Neurodivergent Magic, the YouTube channel for accessible and relatable neurodivergent content. So before we dive into what emotional dysregulation looks like, we need to really talk about what healthy emotional regulation looks like. Because for a long time, I did not grasp this. I did not understand what healthy emotional regulation looked like because I had honestly never experienced it. I knew it wasn't being happy all the time. I knew other people weren't happy all the time, but I also knew that they didn't experience the emotional swings that I did. And I didn't understand what the goal was. What was I supposed to be feeling? So healthy emotional regulation, as I said, is not being happy all the time. It's not being neutral all the time. It's not being sad all the time. It's staying within a relatively narrow window of something called baseline. Baseline is a generally neutral feeling. It's not super happy or super sad, and you're not supposed to be at baseline all the time when you experience healthy emotional regulation, but you are supposed to stay pretty close to it. Major life events like a death in the family or getting a promotion at work might make you swing one way or the other a lot farther than normal, but in day-to-day -day life, you stay pretty close to baseline. And when you do deviate from baseline in a big way, you often return to baseline relatively quickly. Finally, when it comes to healthy emotional regulation, you often feel the pure emotion. And what I mean by that is if you're sad, you just feel sad. Or if you're happy, you just feel happy. You don't feel emotions about your emotions. You just feel what you feel. If you're listening to that and you're like, well, shit, that's not how I deal with emotions at all. It's okay. We're going to talk about it. So what is emotional dysregulation then? There are three main signs of emotional dysregulation. Number one is fast hard, extreme deviations from baseline. These are not minor mood fluctuations. These are major mood shifts. And they can often feel like they come out of nowhere or whatever it was that triggered them seems so small, like it shouldn't have triggered such an extreme reaction. Number two, you probably have trouble returning to baseline in a timely fashion. Emotions are allowed to run their course. You are allowed to feel what you feel however long you want to feel it. But if you're feeling your emotions for hours, days, maybe even weeks at a time, and you just can't seem to process them, they just sit there on your chest, that might be emotional dysregulation. And number three, you probably react to your emotions. So instead of feeling the pure emotion itself, like I was mentioning before, you feel a lot of feelings about your feelings. For instance, if you feel sad, you might start to shame yourself. Like, you shouldn't be sad. Other people have it worse. Like, get over yourself. Stop throwing a pity party. Or if you feel proud of yourself, you might shame yourself for that as well and say, you shouldn't feel proud. Stop. Like, it's not that big a deal. People do this all the time. Like, get over yourself. As you can imagine, emotional dysregulation is lots of fun, except that it's not, of course, and it can affect our lives in some really profoundly negative ways. First is our relationships. It's really hard to maintain a loving, connected relationship, whether that's romantic or platonic, when you can't keep your emotions stable. And look, I am speaking directly from experience. I lived with emotional dysregulation pretty much my entire life until the last like three or four years. And my relationships, even though they were wonderful and they were built on foundations of trust and respect, they still suffered because my emotions were so all over the place. Emotional dysregulation can also affect your self-concept. It's really hard to have a stable image of who you are as a person when how you feel can fluctuate so wildly and so almost randomly. This can lead to a lot of stress about, you know, knowing who you are, and it can also lead to self-loathing and just not liking who you are. Like it feels like the only stable part of you is the fact that you are unstable and 
that feels really hard to love sometimes. Finally, emotional dysregulation can have a huge impact on your productivity as well. It's really hard to get stuff done when you can't focus because you feel like garbage. Or even because you feel fine, but you felt like garbage 10 minutes ago and you have emotional whiplash. It's really hard to recenter yourself and actually get anything done. Okay, finally, let's bust some myths about emotional dysregulation. Myth number one. Emotional dysregulation is only a thing you experience if you have bipolar disorder. This is a myth that I wholeheartedly believed for a while, and it's why I actually originally got diagnosed with bipolar disorder, because I had such extreme emotional dysregulation that I thought the only explanation could be bipolar. As I learned more about neurodivergence, the many, many types of neurodivergence, the more I learned that emotional dysregulation is actually a key component of lots of types of neurodivergence. Emotional dysregulation can go hand in hand with agitated depression. It can go hand in hand with ADHD. It can go hand in hand with autism and so many other types of neurodivergencies. If you experience emotional dysregulation, I'm not telling you to rule out bipolar disorder because it absolutely could explain what's going on, but just know that that's not the only option. Myth number two, emotional dysregulation is a sign that a person is weak-willed. Obviously, you guys know I think this one is completely false, but it's a pervasive myth. Myth. A lot of people see sensitivity and emotionality as a huge weakness. In reality, it takes a really strong person to survive emotional dysregulation. Having your emotions swing back and forth so wildly is exhausting and makes you feel pretty damn crazy. But there are absolutely ways to cope. I'm actually offering a completely new program called Regulated Emotional Mastery, and I would love for you to join. Go ahead and check out the link in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next Tuesday.